Hello class, it's Professor Streeter, and today I wanted to talk about the idea of honor in Greek literature, Greek culture, in Homer's Odyssey. And this will set up discussion question and homework assignment for next week at the end of, of the video. It might be more than one part, it will be more than one part, so this is the first part. There's going to be two sides to the screen. One will be me and one will be, so there's me on the right or on one side and on the other side are notes that you can look at. I'll share with you and, and I'm really just gonna be working through these notes, nothing, nothing too complicated. They're, they're my notes. The opening discussion question that I was gonna start with today is this. <clears throat> the longing for home in Homer's Odyssey can be understood as a commitment to a way of life, not just uh, a longing for a, a, a place, but a way of life. So he doesn't want his men, Odysseus doesn't want his men to eat the lotus fruit, for example, when they arrive on the, the island of the lotus eaters, because he doesn't want them to forget who they are and what binds them together, what makes them a community or what makes them Greek, right? But here it, it's it's as much trying to remind them of their way of life as he is trying to remind them of the place and the people. But the place and the people, you know, that's part of what makes a way of life, obviously. So he doesn't want them to forget their shared codes, their customs, their rituals. This is what the longing for home signifies. And this is why he doesn't want them to eat the fruit. Um, so one question to think about on your own is where do we see evidence in the text, you know, in Homer's poem? Where do we see evidence of Odysseus's efforts to maintain a sense of honor, a sense of tradition, to preserve social bonds of loyalty among his men as he struggles to get home. Where do we see that in the text, in the first 12 books? What are the ethical codes and social customs that he's trying to protect and preserve? Of course, we see it when he comes home too, because he's coming home to a place where, that doesn't feel like home. It's been overrun by suitors who are not observing the shared codes and customs and rituals. They are, um, they are a threat to tradition. And all the men are dead when he gets home, so he's tried to remind them of their way of life, and this, this got them all killed, sadly. But Odysseus remains, and he's trying to restore something of his way of life, his commitment to a way of life, as he returns to Ithaca trying to rest restore something, restore the codes, the customs that he's been trying to protect all along in his journey home, and trying to avoid forgetting. Okay, so that's a, a question to open with, you can think about. And I, so I wanna sort of set up then the question for this video, which is what is a life of honor? If that's what Odysseus is trying to protect in some sense, right? He's trying to maintain a sense of honor maintain his commitment to an honorable way of life. Well, what is that? How does Homer's Odyssey, excuse me, how does Homer's Odyssey answer this question? We can start by looking at the prophecy of Tiresias in book 11. And here, um, let me come back to, uh, oops, where did I go? Sorry, I'll return somehow. <laughs> um, here I am. I need to keep track of the time, so. Okay, um, we can start by looking at book 11. So this is page 161. And if you notice, there are line numbers. And so we're looking at line 97 in book 11. And this is the the, the book where Odysseus, with his men, travels to the underworld. Circe has given him directions on how to do this. 
And the first thing he must do when he travels to the underworld is meet Tiresias, uh, the ghost of Tiresias, a prophet. Tiresias has a prophecy to share with Odysseus. Um, and so looking at page, line 97, uh, these are Tiresias's words that he speaks to Odysseus. Um, you seek a homecoming sweet as honey, shining Odysseus, but a god will make it bitter. For I do not think you will elude the earth shaker. That's a reference to Poseidon. So Odysseus seeks a homecoming sweet as honey. What is that? What? That's an interesting uh, poetic moment, right? Homer is a poet first and foremost. Um, and he uh, likens Odysseus's homecoming or his desire for a homecoming to the sweetness of honey. That's what he seeks. So you can think like, what does that, what would that look like? What would it look like for Odysseus's homecoming to be sweet as honey or anyone's homecoming, right? In some sense, that's what we all desire. Uh, the, 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 the sweetness of honey is a, a, a metaphor, an image that captures our desire for a good homecoming. But um, we know now from Tiresias' prophecy that Odysseus' homecoming will not be sweet. It will be bitter. It will be sour and bitter. This is something that Odysseus learns now, as, as, as though he, maybe he already knew it. <laughs> you know, he's already struggled a lot. He's already suffered a lot. But the, the suffering will continue. The pain will continue. The homecoming will not be sweet. It will be bitter. Well, why? Right? This is a question that's presumably is in Odysseus's mind as he as he's listening to Tiresias. Why must his homecoming be bitter? Um, okay. So, but we do learn that Odysseus, if we read the rest of Tiresias's prophecy, he will have vengeance. He will come home. It will be a bitter homecoming, but he will have vengeance on the suitors. A question now is emerging in our minds as readers and also in Odysseus's mind, right? How? It's one thing to be told that he will get vengeance on the suitors. It's another thing to know how to do it, right? What will that look like? So anyway, there is a clear connection here between getting vengeance on the suitors and restoring honor to the house of Ithaca. And here we have uh, our first reference to the idea of honor. The honorable life is tied to the idea of avenging wrongs done to one's family. And this comes out in Tiresias' prophecy. It comes out in other places where the idea of honor and the honorable life is uh, thought to have something to do with avenging wrongs that are done to your family. So um, we also learn that Odysseus will die uh, with his people prospering all around him. This is something that he learns from the prophecy. This is something that Tiresias, the ghost, tells him in the underworld. He shows him an image of his own death. Remember when Enkidu dreams of his own death. Here Odysseus gets an image of his own death shared with him by the prophet Tiresias, who in life was blind, right? Tiresias in his life was blind, but he sees the future. Tiresias also was a hermaphrodite, so he had the experience of both men and women. So he knows what men know, he knows what women know, he's experienced the world through both genders. So he's kind of, he carries that knowledge, the knowledge of the future and the knowledge of both men and women, or male and female. He's the one who gives Odysseus the prophecy and shares with him here the image of his own death with his people, his family, surrounding him and prospering. So that suggests that he will die a good death, right? I put that as a question, um, but that, that raises a question. What is a good death? Everyone will die, but we want to die a good death. And here Odysseus seems to get the vision of a good death from Tiresias, surrounded by his family, his family is prospering. Um, why is that important? Right? What does it mean to die a good death? And also, why does Odysseus need to hear this? This is an interesting moment, right? He, he's learning about his future. He will get vengeance on the suitors, right? His homecoming will be bitter, but he'll get vengeance on the suitors, and he will die with his people surrounding him. Um, okay. 
So uh, then he goes on to, to ask about his mother. Notice when he arrives in the underworld, the first person he sees is the ghost of Elpinor, who has died you know, uh, by getting drunk and falling off Cersei's roof. So he never makes it off Cersei's island. And they will have to go back after they leave the underworld and bury Elpinor so he doesn't live forever in that limbo state between life and death, between, between Earth and, 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 and the underworld. <clears throat> But he also uh, sees his mother and he resists going to talk to her before he speaks with Tiresias because uh, Circe told him that. She said, the first person you must speak to before you talk to anybody else is, is, is Tiresias. Um, but at this moment, he asked Tiresias for, for help in talking to his mother and not only talking to his mother, in, in getting his mother to recognize him for who he is. He wants his mother to see him all children want to be seen by their parents, right? This is a, a, a common struggle. Uh, teenagers always feel like their parents don't see them. Well, even when you become an adult, right? The, the desire for recognition from the father, from the mother is a deep, deep desire. And Odysseus has this. He wants his mother to recognize him. And so Tiresias reminds him that the way to get her to speak is to give her blood. This is interesting. The ghosts can't speak, they can't approach us until they drink blood, the blood of rams that are sacrificed. And after drinking the blood, she will speak the truth. I mean, there's a sense that the ghosts, they want to, to, to share the truth. They want to share what they know. They know something we don't know, right? Because they're, they're, they're dead. Um, and so she wants to share her truth, but she needs to drink the blood first. There's something kind of vampiric about these ghosts, um, interestingly. Um, but this is a question, I think, now. Why, why must the mother see the son for who he is? Why, does, why is it so important to Odysseus that his mother see him for who he is? Why is that, why is that so important? And what does the mother see? Right, it's an amazing moment, the, the encounter between Odysseus and his mother. Right? Most of us don't get to say goodbye to our parents because we don't know when they're going to die. And then when they're gone, we wish we'd had this kind of conversation. We wish we'd gotten to, to talk to them about the things that really matter. He's got this chain. Also, the other thing about this moment is this is how he learns that his mother's dead. He went to the underworld not knowing that she's dead, but since she sees, since she sees her, uh, her ghost, uh, this is how he knows that she's gone. Um, but this is something to think about. What does the mother see in the sun? How does she see Odysseus? Um, what does she ask? She asks why, why you're here. How did you get here? She acknowledges that it's hard for the living to come this far and, and, and reach this place. There's so many rivers to cross. Um, he comes though, he doesn't, he didn't choose to come. He comes out of necessity. His journey is continuing. He hasn't reached home yet. And she sees this, that she, he, he is here out of necessity. Um, and he, what does he want to know? He wants to know how his mother died, how things are with his father. He wants to know how things are with his son, with his wife, right? Odysseus is thinking about his family. And here he asks a question, right? And here we'll, we'll, we'll pause this will be the end of this part of the video. Um, he wants to know, does the honor that I had, this is on page 163, line 175, does the honor I had still remain with them or has it passed to some other man? And do they all say, I will never return? This is an interesting question. What does it mean to say this about honor? What is the honor that he is speaking of here? His mother says that the honor does remain with Telemachus, right? The honor that uh, Odysseus um, sort of stands for and has tried to preserve. It, it, has, it has remained with Tele Telemachus. Well, what does that mean? Well, he holds the lands unchallenged. He has maintained the, the, the family's hold on the land. Although this is to some degree not true. Right? He's, <laughs> you know, he's, he, he may lose it. Uh, but he, he, he is invited to the suitor's feasts as the lawgiver. Right? So he's acknowledged as having authority to manage the lands and lay down the law for the people. His authority is being challenged, but he still has that authority. Right? The honor is being threatened, but it's not completely gone. Right? Telemachus has the honor in the sense he holds the land and he has the authority to lay down the law for the people. That's what it means to, to have the honor. Okay, we'll stop here and come back for part two.